International Civil Society Center is a platform for international NGOs or civil society organizations, CSOs. We bring together the likes of Amnesty International, Plan International, SAS Children's Villages International and others. We bring these organizations together to tackle joint challenges and to collaborate on these and learn from each other. In our project Anticipating Futures for Civil Society Operating Space, we're combining two areas that we've been working on. One area is foresight and trend scouting, and the other area is shrinking civic space, undue attacks on our organizations and our partners. So we need to be more ready to address those crises and not to be caught up in a state of shock. Instead, we need to think about how can we actually shape our future, or how can we shape our futures and become more imaginative about what will come about and be a step ahead. So why is it important to increase anticipatory capacity in light of attacks on civic space? I think one important element of anticipatory capacity is offering alternative and positive futures. Um, and I think that's particularly important and there's a real opportunity at this moment of attacks on civic space and on civil society organisations to craft a compelling future narrative um, in which civic space is important and valuable and useful to people that it corresponds to or that it addresses their concerns, whether that's concerns about their security or concerns about their health or concerns about their, their cost of living, um, to understand why civic space is important to all of those issues and the value of civil society um, into, in holding that space and creating that space and expanding that space for them. Because I think one of the challenges is not just in the ferocity of the attacks on civic space and civil society organisations, but in the weakness of the defence um, of them by the general public. I think that's really where civil society organisations have work to do and that anticipating or increasing our anticipatory capacity is going to help us get there. Why is it important to do that in, in civic space? I think the relevance in civic space um, comes from giving us a good chance to succeed, a good chance to preserve the space, a good chance to see civic space thrive. That's where the relevance is entirely. Otherwise, we would continuously be reactive. And that's the state of civil society at the moment, right? We're reacting to events, we're reacting to changes in the landscape, we are reacting to changes in government. We are reacting to um, people in the private sector who come up with new ideas, new inventions. We are reacting to changes in the landscape of technology, whether it is digital transformation or AI or biometrics. We would continue to be um, in this reactive state, you know, disadvantaged, except we are able to become anticipatory. It's no longer um, a question of if we should be or whether it is important for us to be. It is a matter of survival and sustainability. So for a long time, I feel like the sector constantly is into a problem-solving mode. We exist as fixing the issues that we see at the present or immediate future, not long-term future. And the model has not worked. You know, for a long, long time now, we are at a point where we can say very confidently that the speed with which the world is shifting, the challenges are coming in, the corporate sector, the political sector is shifting. We are way behind. Our speed needs to change. We need to be very, very uh, futuristic. We need to come up with solutions way in advance. We need to bring the people along and not just work within us, you know, and uh, I think now is the perfect time. What does it take for those defending and increasing the civic space to be more futures ready? I think the first thing is understanding, appreciating um, the value of anticipatory capacity for futures thinking um, by the whole organisation and by the leadership, not just by a few staff in that organisation. So there really needs to be a willingness to invest in um, anticipatory capacity, anticipatory action is how we can be both responsive to crisis in the present time and also create the space and the capacity to think about and shape the futures. So what foresight and practice is able to help the civil society to achieve 
is to be able to identify the patterns, the tactics, the strategies, the approaches used by both state and non-state actors to limit their operations. And foresighting helps us to build, um, not just build those strategies, but increase our competence, acquire the necessary resources that we need to push back effectively, both now and for the future. You know, when we start talking about sector-wide infrastructure and decolonizing, a lot of the organizations that we work in in the sector are coming from colonial backgrounds. And if they are continuing to perpetrate the same principles and values and not challenging their own infrastructure, their own design from a lens of decolonizing and diversity, then their existence is not what will help us in the future. So if I think we need to look at what is what kind of civic space is needed in the future and based on that go reverse and start challenging ourselves. I, th I still struggle with organizations saying the sector needs to change. It starts from we need to change as our organizations. So yeah. What is needed to make a stronger anticipatory organizations uh, is of course funding. But going beyond the funding issue, it's also about building those capacities and methodologies that will help organizations to run these exercises. As the International Civil Society Centre, we want to bring you together in order to create time and space to think about the futures that we want and how we can actually go about shaping those. And we can't go it alone. We really need you to go it with us. We need partners and collaborators who want to take this further with us. So we call on you to engage with us and contact us and find more out about this project.